Hi, on API brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. This week it is NXP. Lady Ada, what is this week's Ion API? Well, it is M7 week here at Adafruit uh, with just a coincidence, or maybe it was on purpose. Um, we're releasing our new IMX RT 1011 M7 Metro, which uses a chip in the same family as uh, this week's Ion MPI, which is the IMX. RT 1040 series. This is a new chip in uh, the illustrious IMX RT um, uh, 1011, 1010, 1020, 1040, 1050, and 1060. I think there's even 1160 now. Um, a wide range of chips. And uh, this one is right in the middle. Um, this is part of the, what they call the crossover MCU series. So a lot of people here you know, watching or listening, they've used microcontrollers such as 8-bit um, PICs or Atmels, or maybe they've used even 32-bit Cortex M0s. Um, if you want more Ms, you can go from M0 to M4 and then from there on to M7. So the M7s are very fast processors. Um, this one, they can, the whole family, they can be clocked up to one gigahertz. This particular chip, the 1040, is a 500 or 600 giga, uh, megahertz processor. Um, there's also some that have a separate subprocessor, a Cortex M4 at 400 megahertz. They have a ton of SRAM uh, that can be tightly coupled. They can have external RAM. They have built-in DC-DC converter, so you don't need a separate PMIC. Graphics, um, external QSPY or uh, Octal SPY flash memory for storing code and files, and then um, NXP security as well. So this is the uh, Metro M7, which is our you know first board that we've made with this series. And, and I learned a lot um, getting this board together. Um, so the IMX RT 1011 is kind of the entry level version of this family. Um, it's, you know, like a microcontroller, but it runs really, really fast. And it has this M7 core. Uh, we've paired it here with an ESP32 for um, Wi-Fi and possibly Bluetooth add-on. Um, some things that are neat that you can see here is um, this is a two-layer board. Um, these chips are designed to be used as low-cost upgrades from, say, M4 or M3 chips. You don't need a separate uh, PMIC manager for all the cores. You just need... Um, you see on the top left, there's inductor, capacitors, passives. On the right, there's inexpensive QSPY memory. We use the Winbond uh, W25QJV series. Um, this is 64 megabit, 8 megabyte. And uh, you just give it 3 volt power, crystal, and you're pretty much ready to rock. It's got even built-in USB. To program these chips, um, What's recommended is using the MCU Expresso IDE from NXP. It's kind of their all-in-one IDE setup. Um, I will say that I personally haven't used MCU Expresso. Instead, I just use ABR, sorry, ARM GCC, um, ARM GCC and the uh, NXP SDK work really well. And I just use it on the command line. This particular series, the um, IMX RT 1040, like I said, it's kind of in the middle. I'll show you the whole series of what's available in this family. Um, as you expect, is a Cortex M7 uh, with, of course, floating point support. Uh, it runs at 600 megahertz. If you want it for, I think, the full temperature range, you drive it down at 500 megahertz. But of course, you can uh, pick what frequency you want um, with the PLL. Um, it's got the built-in DC-DC converter, so you just need an inductor and you know some capacitors and some passives to run that. Inside is uh, 512K of SRAM, which you can use as tightly coupled memory. Why you need that? Because there is no built-in flash memory. Instead, you have to wire up an external, in my case, I've wired up QSPY NOR flash. You can, of course, also use um, parallel NOR flash or EMCC or NAND, as, as shown here. QSPY is kind of the cheapest and easiest and uses the fewest pins. But then if you want to get instructions off of the, um, for, you know, the, the firmware that's running on the chip, you have, you're, you're bound by how fast you can get the firmware code off of that QSPY NOR flash. And so by dividing up some of that <clears throat> tightly coupled memory, maybe 128K, you can cache instructions. So if you're running in a loop, 
your large enough loop, you can cache the whole thing in uh, the tightly coupled memory and you'll get the benefits of that 600 megahertz processor without being slowed down by your, you know, whatever, uh, one to, uh, sorry, 100 megahertz maybe at the most speed of uh, your flash memory. Uh, one thing that this, the 1040 kind of adds that above the 1011, 1010, 1020 series is it does have um, the graphics support and the uh, LCD controller. So you can use a dot clock style TFT, not just your standard um, SPI TFT. And uh, it comes in two packages, which I'll show you. They're both the same pinout 169 VGAs. Uh, one is 0. 0.65 and one is 0. 0.8 millimeter pitch. Um, so it's designed for easy routing. Lots of peripherals. I'm not going to go through all of them because there's a ton. Um, you know, SDIO, eight UARTs, four I squared C's, three SPIs, Flex IO, which is quite interesting. It's kind of, if you've used PIO on the RP2040, Flex IO is kind of similar. It's sort of this um, all in one. You want to kind of do other protocols that might not be supported uh, natively. You can mimic them with Flex IO. Lots of I2S. This, um, the 10 11 series doesn't have can or ethernet um but these do it does have one usb high speed which can be either uh, peripheral or controller um however it doesn't have two some of the 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 1050 and above have two uh usbs all memory stuff like i said in the middle there's that parallel lcd you've got enough gpio you can control those 24-bit displays with you where you have 24 bits rgb uh, V-Sync, H-Sync, dot clock, etc., um, and ADC, no DAC, but there is I2S output and lots of PWMs and timers. If you want to use the USB core for uh, this chip series, um, we do have support for the NXP IMX RT and Teeny USB. Uh, TAC, one of our developers that's uh, supported by Adafruit, has done an excellent job um, adding support for this the NXP series NXP the LPC series actually was one of the first chips supported by Teeny USB, um, but we definitely have support for the IMX series as well. Uh, it's open source and a great way to kind of start structuring your project again if you're using um, ARM GCC, which is what Teeny USB builds in. Uh, we also have a Teeny UF2 bootloader, so the, there is a built-in bootloader, a ROM bootloader. Uh, and it's very fast and it works quite well. But if you would like to have a user-friendly bootloader, we have a second stage bootloader built on Teeny USB called Teeny UF2. Um, and it's a drag and drop. You know, you create these UF2 files that you might be familiar from. Our SAMD processor chips and RP2040 chips use that format uh, for drag and drop programming. Um, but again, there's this ROM bootloader that you don't have to worry about. Uh, and you program it with a command line tool that's available on any operating system. So. You know, if you want to debug it, you'll need a J-Link, but you don't need one to program it, built-in programmer. Um, as we mentioned, uh, these are available in 0.65 and 0.8 uh, millimeter ball pitch BGA. They are designed to be routed onto a two-layer board, and, and they do have, you know, dev boards that are two-layer. Just to prove it, you don't need a four-layer or six-layer. I mean, you'll, of course, benefit. You'll have a bigger ground plane. Maybe you'll be able to fit your parts uh, tighter because you don't have to route around them um, but it's designed to uh, do a fan out on an inexpensive uh, two-layer board so just um, check the application hints uh, they do give you suggestion uh, on how to do the fan out and the layout uh, and this is just uh, from the nxp uh, fan out recommendation they will give you hey here's how we suggest you do the spacing and um, drc rules to make sure that your um, imx processor uh, succeeds, you know, in your, your VGA design. Cause the, uh, if you look at the Metro, it's the, uh, TQFP. Um, and here's the rules for the uh, 0.65 just here for your reference. So this is again, part of the series of IMX RT chips, uh, starting from the bottom. Again, the, the number is a little confusing. The RT 1010, there's only the 1011 in existence and the 1040, it's actually the 1042. So like that last digit is sort of like a, series of of parts um so you can see kind of you start with the rt1011 which doesn't have ethernet or canvas and only has one usb and doesn't have graphics and you kind of move up from the bottom 1020 doubles the amount of ram to 256k and then the 1040 doubles it again to 512 but it's also the first one where you move from a qfp or qfn to a bga 
Still, it's 0.8 millimeters, um, so I really think even though prototyping might be a challenge, um, any pick and place house should be able to handle that processor. And it has the graphic acceleration, um, lots of I2S and SPDIF, again, lots of peripherals. Uh, and it's not mentioned here, but it has two flex IO peripherals, um, whereas I think the 1050 only has one. So they've kind of bumped up uh, some of the peripherals. The full uh, table isn't here, but you can check it out on the NXP website. And then, you know, as you work on the 1040, if you're like, oh man, I really want, uh, you know, a camera interface, or maybe I want uh, USB host as well as USB peripheral, I want two USB ports, uh, you bump yourself up to the 1050, keep going to the 1060 all the way to the 1180, which is quite a beast with built in uh, one or two megabytes of SRAM. Um, the Flex IO is kind of the most interesting thing here. Again, you can emulate. Uh, there's a lot of peripheral buses, but maybe your pins are being used by you know, that parallel TFT, or maybe you need like another three UARTs. Um, you can use Flex IO to, to mimic a lot of these. Um, note that it says for the 1010, but it's it's for the entire IMX series. They all have um, the Flex IO, and the 1040 has two of them. For the display again there's no camera but there is a, a display i don't it says displaying camera i guess you could mimic the camera again with flex io for display um note that you do have to have a frame buffer right so you will have to wire up external dram um, i can show you on the eval board it looks like there is a uh, dram on there already so you can kind of follow their layout you're going to use you know a bunch of pins for that and then you'll use a lot of pins for the 24-bit parallel rgb lcd but again, it's pretty rare to find a inexpensive processor that can drive a full TFT display um, that you know doesn't uh, doesn't have like a massive number of pins. I mean, this does have a massive number of pins, but it's easy to route. Um, the only other chips that basically have those displays, which are, are kind of specialty displays, where they get very very expensive. Whereas, whereas this one's pretty affordable, considering it can drive up to uh, I think it's like. 100 and 1000 by 700 pixels so um you know fairly large like 10 um inch diagonal displays and um if you want to get started we, i mean the 1040 just came out but uh you can expect that we'll probably add it to the list we do have circuit python so you know you want to use that as a core for your development um it's available and we're we're adding more support especially since we're releasing this first metro m7 into the shop finally um, so check it out uh, if you also want to um, use CircuitPython, which is MIT licensed, as a building block for your design. But, um, you know, we'll probably end up adding, you know, FlexIO support, the Parallel TFT support, and USB host support for this series of chips through CircuitPython. And, you know, when I wrote the test code for um, the Metro, which I wrote in ARM GCC using the NXP SDK, um, I definitely cribbed from the circuit Python code. I was like, well, how do you do the analog reads or how do you like set the pull-ups? Oh, hey, we have some example code uh, ready to go. And I uh, also recommend getting the eval board, uh, which was not too expensive and has everything. So you can see kind of in the middle left there, um, there is a micro E socket and there's also Arduino socket, NXP chip in the center. And then there's like a microphone and like headphone out and there's, also, a um, on the top left, there's an M2 socket where you can plug in Wi-Fi. So this is like a quite a beast. Um, we tend to target um, when we develop CircuitPython, we we target the eval boards because they're pretty plentiful and they kind of have everything on them. Um, I'll show this one uh, on the overhead. It's 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 quite big. Yeah, and uh, it's available on DigiKey. We'll yes, it's stock. in stock. In stock. About and ten bucks a piece. Um, which is a really good deal considering you know you get the SRAM built in. You only need, like I said, passives, crystal, small inductor, and QSPY flash. Maybe add like another dollar to your bomb. Um, this is very affordable when you compare to other uh, M7 boards like the STM series, which you can't get anyways. Um, this could be a very nice upgrade. It has a lot of the same features um, that you would expect from from other well-known m7s so let me uh hold on i'm going to back up my this this board is so chonky i'm gonna back up my overhead 
Okay, so this is, and this is a little bit booklet that came with it. So this is the EVK, which I picked up again, a huge chip in the center. Uh, looks like this is the DRAM, micro SD, micro E socket to use um, micro E boards, Arduino esque um, header socket, M2 for Wi Fi. It looks like there's uh, audio. Oh, this is like a, a codec. Hold on. This is a. Oh, this is a WM8960, our favorite um, microphone and uh, audio output uh, I2S codec. Uh, some audio outputs, uh, Ethernet. Again, this has built in Ethernet. It does have, um, you will need a PHY, and this is probably the PHY for it. And then there's probably uh, inductors. The um, transformers are inside here. Uh, this is that one inductor that you need for the dc dc converter built in and then there's the crystals there's our uh, 32 kilohertz and uh, 24 megahertz and then this is the uh programming and debugging interface this is probably running some uh you know nxp debugger interface code or maybe it's jlink or something compatible um so it's 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 a lot there's a lot going on here buttons dc input and then um this is usb for the debugging I think maybe I don't know USB for native. Oh no, here it is. Here's the USB native. So this you can have on the go. So if you want to have this be host, you would get a USB um, host adapter. And then uh, on the bottom, we're not done yet. Um, on the bottom, you can see the Parallel TFT 40 pin connector. And this is a six pin connector, which um, has a pin out for capacitive touch. Almost certainly this looks like it's the uh, goes together. So you'd have a capacitive touch interface over I squared C here. Um, and parallel TFT over there. And then don't forget, you you know, for that, you need to buffer um, the display. You'll have to pop on some extra RAM, which is probably what this chip is. And then um, I wanted to show real fast the chips themselves. Now I've got to go really small because these are very small chips. Oh, one second. Okay, uh, so this is, uh, this is again the same chip, right? But one of them is 0.65 millimeter ball pitch and this one is 0.8. So I'll flip it over so you can see the comparison. Um, which one do you choose? Well, you know, 0.8 is easier to route, but it's bigger and uh, 0.65 is nice and compact. You can still do it with a two layer board, but you're gonna have, um, you know, a very good process for your PCB manufacturer. So pick which one, same, you know, same material on the inside, uh, just a different uh, package on the outside. So that's the IMX RT 1040 series. So check that out. And then um, don't forget to pick up a Metro M7 if you want to get started with uh, the crossover MCU series. That's on MPI. Hi on MPI.